Jay Gooder, it's an absolute pleasure to have you back on the podcast again. How are you doing? I'm doing fantastic, and it's a pleasure to be here. How are you? No, it's awesome. Yeah, no, I'm really All good, right. thank you. And yeah, it's it's good to have you back on the show. Is it the third time you've been on, I think? It's around the third I time? I think or... this is the third time. Yeah, I don't think we've done it four times. I think this is number yeah. three. And um, I think we chatted back in, was it December last yeah, year? Yeah, four months ago. So let's yeah. mess them up today, man. What the hell you want to know? Yeah, no, definitely. <laughs> and, <laughs> so like how things have been since um, we last spoke? Uh, I, I see, you know, there's been many developments and you've got a new song out and, you know, how things have been? Things over here are good, man, every day. I'm really on my spiritual kick. Um, I'm really getting connected with myself and whatever higher power, you know, is making all this stuff happen. Um. Yeah, man, I'm doing good. I'm in a good headspace. What about you? No, it's good. And yeah, no, I'm in a I'm in a good place too. Just being busy with work and you know seeing family and everything else. So, and you know, I always, you know, it's weird because I'm at work and whilst I'm working, I'm always kind of thinking about podcasting in the back of my mind. So you know, I'm always making you know a bit of time when I can, you know, to do this, and it's a real passion of mine. But yeah, I'm in a medical place and, you know, I see what you're doing and I really like your new song, um, Two Cents. Yeah, I appreciate that. Before we talk about my song, though, yeah, yeah, we were just talking about work. You told me you talk into like five people a day for roughly an hour at a time. Where do you find the energy to then podcast and talk to more people? For an hour or however long you talk to them. What's up with that? Yeah, that's a really good question. I think, you know, like talking to people, connect, connecting with people is, you know, something that I'm really passionate about. And it's a real driving force, I think, for me. And just my, my, where my energy flows, if that makes sense. And I feel like it's something that comes natural to me and i've always been interested in people you know even from a young age so me doing my job i think it's like if you do say something for a while you kind of get like calluses on you know like say you work out you got calluses on your skin it's like I've, I've done this job for nearly two years in this role so i'm kind of used to it now but mm. sometimes there's days where I mean, I can't go into detail, but you might, you know, you might have quite a heavy chat with somebody and that can be difficult sometimes because they might, you know, they might share quite deep things. So for me, I have to do things for myself to recharge. And that might be, you know, going for a run or, you know, going to Muay Thai or, or playing a video game or, or even doing podcasts it helps me to recharge. But yeah, I mean, the energy for me to do what I do and then come and do a podcast, I think it's it's just this energy I have. It's like an it's like an outlet almost. Do you like the art of the conversation, or are you more of like kind of a learner, and you like to to learn about people and their experiences and such like from what they tell you so i guess are you more into the dialogue or the the data retrieval from these people mm. i think it's i think it's like you know the communication i think you know with podcasting i've learned to to really tune in and listen and i think when you have empathy as well you can touch base and relate to other people and identify i think sometimes parts of yourself maybe in that person what they've experienced or what they've been through and i think in terms of mental health you know i can relate to other people if they've experienced anxiety if they've you know if they've had depression or if they've had ptsd i can kind of tune into where they're at because i've been there in the past so i think you know it's listening it's uh, empathy um, but also, you know, that, that conversation and, and yeah, it's, it's, 
it's quite self-reflective because you're kind of learning about yourself as you're listening to other people speak, if that makes sense. No, I understand that. Yeah, no, I'm, I'm similar in that way. That's kind of why I asked you. I ask a lot of questions because I'm like, I'm a, I'm a learner, man. I like to learn. I wanted to I like to know what makes you tick, mm. why you think this, where you come from. And even if I relate to it or not, like, I'm going to learn something from it. And maybe it's mm. about myself or maybe it's about humans in general, or maybe it's some clarity on that old friend I had five years ago. Maybe you make me think of something and say, oh, maybe that's why he did this. Or maybe he, maybe that's why he always said this. Mm. Um, that's what, what it is for me. But for you, it sounds a little bit more like therapeutic for you as well. Yeah. Yeah. I think, I think, you know, we, we, I think like I said, we're, we're, we're constantly always learning, you know, and I think there are going to be things that challenge us. And a lot of the time, like in this role, I don't have all the answers for people that I talk to. Um, but, you know, I can just give my opinion and my advice and, and kind of say, well, maybe try these set of things and see what works, but it's two way thin, you know, if people, especially in the job I do, you have to hold a space for somebody who's talking and you can only make suggestions and you can listen to them. And a lot of the time people, people in general life, people go looking for the answers, you know, outside of themselves, but realistically people have all the answers inside them. If that makes sense. It's, it's yeah. like a tangled ball of string. People come to you and they'll, they'll talk to you. And as they're talking to you, they're untangling and picking apart this string and by them talking, they're kind of understanding what's, what's going on. So people kind of really do the work themselves. You just have to kind of, it's called like being person-centered. So you're being non-judgmental of somebody and you see them, you know, for who they are, you know, as a person. And what do you, how do you think this compares to meditation? Because a lot of what you're talking about sounds like the benefits of meditating in a way is where you can unravel those thoughts and unravel that ball um yeah. where do you think it like compares to meditating that's what it sounds I, like to me when you talk about it i think it's it is very similar i think with meditate it's it's that self uh self-reflection so as you're talking about it we might be thinking about what's going on and and it makes you know makes you think of the situation whereas like you know we're meditating it's quite similar but you're not saying anything but you might be saying things to yourself but you're able to go within if that makes sense i think we're meditating and it's that kind of you know re reflecting and um you know because we've all got you know our own minds and a lot of what we do is based on what happens inside isn't it really yeah so it is quite similar well, let's not brush over the fact that you said you do Muay Thai. Is that what I heard you say? Yeah, I've only just started. <laughs> okay, all right. So you don't got a belt or nothing yet? No, no, okay, no. Okay, I'm just getting my ass kicked. <laughs> Is that right? <laughs> yeah. Is Muay Thai on the feet? Is that it's, like striking or is that more uh, grappling? It's um, kind of kind of all. So there's clinches, so where you can like grab. So there's clinches. Uh, there's it's it's like you know fists and and legs as well and, and knees, um, so it's kind of all three. So I've been going, I think, for about just a, a month, just over a month now. Getting punched in the face. Yeah, well, like the last one we we had to put our hands on our heads and get punched in the stomach. So we had our partner hit us in the chest and stomach, and then we switched and. That was interesting, but I, I <laughs> yeah, but I think, I think with that, it's, you know, I, I think we sometimes think, oh, we'll, we'll go and do that thing. And we, like, you know, I, I talked myself out of doing it for quite a while because I was intimidated to start something new. And it's that vulnerability of going into the unknown and being a beginner. And I think I like to be feeling confident and be, you know, being and doing and be at a good level at something. So the challenge for me was, you know, 
taking that all off and learning and and feeling vulnerable because there's an element of vulnerability because you don't know anyone yeah and you're learning something new and and it can be quite you know scary sometimes because you don't want to get hurt so but i but i find it very humbling if that makes sense and in kind of martial arts people are very kind of well respected they don't people respect each other have you ever found that or can can you relate to that yeah i'm a basketball dude so hmm. i've been playing basketball religiously you know three to five days a week for since i was 10 years old so there is a level of you said respect right is that what you said yeah there's a level of respect and understanding from people that really play that consistently like not the people that pick up the basketball you know once a year twice a year but those guys i see on the court every single week multiple times a week there is a level of respect there's a level of understanding and maybe you can relate to this with Muay Thai. I know you mentioned that, you know, there's that fear of getting hit and getting hurt. But doesn't it also feel like when you're in the middle of that, like your brain does not think about anything else? There's like a sense of freedom that is like unlike anything else. Uh, you don't you you don't remember what happened earlier that day. You're not thinking about what you got going on after. There's something like very freeing of the mind when we do things like that. Um, so I'm sure you can relate to that. Are you paying really monthly love... for this thing? Do I pay monthly? Oh, to sorry. Do this thing? It's, it's on the session. So I, I pay, I think it's the equivalent to, uh, I pay six pound a session a week. Are, are you going to compete? Are you going to enter like tournaments or anything like that? The, the, I mean, that may happen in time. Uh, the, one of the one of the fighters, he's doing a tournament actually. <clears throat> so it, you know, the the coach said he kind of you know he can do it for working out up to you know if that's if that's the, he said if that's the avenue you want to go into, then we'll help you kind of get there kind of thing. So I mean, I'm just gonna see where it goes. Um, it'd be cool to do that. It'd be cool to work towards that. But I'm yeah, just it's gonna impressive man. I watch I watch a lot of UFC, so I'm into that stuff. Yeah, yeah, it's pretty, it's pretty, pretty skilled, and Muay Thai is its own kind of breed, um, and it's, it's, I think you know in Thailand, obviously where it originated, it's very, you know, very, very respected, and um, it's quite strict. But I really like what you, how you know what you just said about when you do, say, sports or, um, you know, martial arts or, or training. When you, like you said, you you do go to that kind of, how can I describe it? Like like a certain emotional or mental state or like a lucid state where you're not thinking about anything else. You're just doing whatever it is that you're doing in that moment. And yeah. you're not, and whatever happened before is, is you're just gone. You're just there in the moment. And there's something very kind of, therapeutic about therapeutic with that it's quite it, it just flows things for you in the moment you, it's just in the flow and like whether that's you know doing the basketball training or hitting the pads you just kind of like you feel free you just zoned in so i can yeah. relate to you know what you as you describe yeah yeah i think about that all the time man i think about it all the time when i'm playing basketball it's almost comparative to like um what a lot of people say, like smoking weed will do to you. A lot of people say that smoking weed will uh, heighten your focus on whatever the task at hand is. And like these sports or Muay Thai in your instance is almost like a drug in itself. Whether you're doing it for an hour or you're doing it for like multiple hours, I guarantee that's the only thing you're going to be thinking about. Um, and somebody like myself and maybe even yourself, I don't know if you're like a constant thinker, but I'm an overthinker habitually and, uh, getting that mental break of all the thoughts that like normally swirl throughout my head is, is really nice. Mm. Um, but let's not gloss over the fact you said you play video games as well. What games do you play? Cause Zelda's coming out May 12th. I don't know if you're a Zelda guy. 
Yeah, no, I saw that. I um, yeah. I I have a switch actually. I do have a, I do have a switch, and okay. I I play PlayStation. I play on the Switch. Um, I've played Breath of the Wild <laughs> Zelda, so I I haven't finished it. I haven't really kind of touched the surface on it. Mm. So I have played it, and I, I would like to finish it, and I would like to get the new one. Um, but I what have I been playing recently? Um, well, like the Mario Kart games on the Switch, I play. Um, you play that with your girlfriend. Yeah, I do play that. Yeah, yeah, I, do. yeah. I, know, I know. I know how that is. <laughs> so yeah, we play. We play that. I play with my friend. Um, well, I like indie games. Yeah. Um, Hotline Miami is pretty cool. It's quite an old one. Never heard of it. Uh, I've, I've got Doom. Uh, what else? Uh, Bioshock. Okay, I see what you like. Like kind of shooter games, yeah. And then, shooters. and then when I'm in the mood, I'll play like Battlefield and stuff like that. But I have to be in the right mood, I think, for the game that I play. If I want to just chill out, chill out, I'll play quite a chill game. That's pretty easy. So you got fast reaction time. You must be good at like Call of Duty. I'm not too bad. I'm probably not as good as I used to be. Okay. But uh, I'm too. But, yeah, slow. I like. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I'm too slow. But it's. I think it's good, like you said, to have that kind of thing to help you wind down and to have some kind of outlet. Yeah, man, do the do the shit you love, man. That's that's what I'm about. Whatever you love, do that. Um, you know, I, I'm all about keeping the youth, man. Whatever you like mm. to do as a kid. A lot of people genuinely like that stuff. The stuff they mm. were doing in middle school and high school. A lot of people have real passion and love for that stuff. And they lose it when they start being an adult. Mm. And I don't know, man. If you can do it as an adult, I, I, I'm all for it, man. Do mm. it. If it makes you yeah. happy. Yeah, so And another thing that I... Um... And you can see what you think on this. I, I recently bought uh, like some vinyls. Yeah. For the for the first time, yeah. I've never had any vinyls in my life or a vinyl player. Um, but I just tested on my vinyl player earlier, um, and I've got to take it back to the store because it's like faulty. Yeah. So I'm good at about that, but I sorted it out. But I bought um, I bought a few vinyls. You know, uh, like Juice World. Yes. I uh, got some Juice World vinyls. Uh, MF Doom, you heard of MF Doom? Of course, yeah. So I I got his uh, Mad Villainy. Of course. Vinyl. Yeah. So you see, that's um, one of the greatest hip hop albums of all time. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So uh, my brother actually got me into his music. Okay. Um, so yeah, I got some of them vinyls, but I'm excited, to, you know, to start that collection going and that. Like you said, you know, point to have a passion and have something. You know, if you love it, you know, to follow it. So that's something I've started getting into. Is that something that you've ever been into? You've been into vinyls or CDs or tapes or I know so you're into I don't you're, do you're... vinyls. Um my buddy Al Weather, he's a fellow musician. He does the vinyl. Um, I just got him the Donda, the Kanye US Donda album on vinyl. I'm sure that sounds fantastic um he's got some adele albums on vinyl which i'm sure sound great um my mother got some vinyl she's more into like classic rock she got like elton john and uh kiss and people like that on vinyl um i've been a cd guy so i've i have all the jewel cases of all the cds i bought growing up and uh believe it or not I, I actually buy albums on itunes every friday and i burn them to cd and i still play cds uh in my car so i'm still oh, riding nice. around with the cd books yeah. oh nice yeah i'm crazy with it man i'm a little crazy <laughs> no, i love uh, that and i love that you still got a cd player in your car and stuff that's awesome i'd love a cd yeah there's no car. skipping when the cd's in that's what we're listening to. You can't switch yeah. to another artist. Uh, yeah. You can't switch to another album. You're getting these 16 songs. Yeah. Uh, yeah, man. I'm big on the album. So I'm glad you're getting into vinyl, man. That's cool. It's an expensive yeah. hobby, though. I know those vinyls yeah. aren't cheap. 
Yeah, it's not cheap. I mean, I think the cheapest one I bought was nineteen pounds. With that, um, I don't know anything about it. Like, okay, so like nineteen pounds, it's like nineteen dollars. So I mean, so why? And it's about uncert, 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 uncert. So my grandma's trying to come around. <laughs> Your grandma? <laughs> yeah. Hi, grandma. <laughs> yeah. Um, but yeah, but yeah, the, uh, the CD players, I mean, yeah, vinyl's expensive. I mean, I think I saw that they surpassed CDs in America last year because in sales, in sales, so like in 2022, yeah. I think they made a billion dollars off vinyls in America. And then it was CDs hit 463 million dollars. Yeah. So CDs are still selling. Yeah, well, cars don't come with CD players now. So I don't know where people are playing CDs. And I, I know the vinyl thing has become this collection thing now. A lot of people are just collecting them like yourself. Yeah. You know, a lot of artists like Griselda, a lot of these New York artists, they do special vinyl releases uh, and shit like that. Yeah. I'd like to do something like that, man. Yeah. I was going to have a question to ask as well. Like, are you into um, Wu Tang? Do you like Wu Tang Clan? You have not so music? much. Um, yeah. Eventually, I am. I am a um, an early two thousands hip hop guy. Yeah. So I do a lot of research now of nineties and late eighties. Yeah. Um. I haven't gotten to Wu Tang, and believe it or not, that MF Doom album you mentioned is actually the next album I'm getting. Oh, nice! Digest. Yeah, it's funny you mentioned that. Um, yeah, but like, you know, I've been playing a little, you know, tribe called Quest. I've been mm. doing some old Dirty Bastard. I know he's Wu Tang. Yeah, he was good. Uh, he was crazy. I really like his energy a lot. Um. But Wu Tang is coming next, man. Mm. I'm a little daunted by their catalog, to be honest with you. I know they have a lot of music. Yeah. So I almost kind of feel like, damn, where do I start? Uh, there's so much. If I don't yeah. like this one thing, does that mean I'm not gonna like the next five, ten things they made? There's also yeah. how many members. Mm. I know you got Red Man, Method Man, uh, Raekwon. Yeah. Uh, Ghostface. Yeah, there's loads. It's a lot of work. Is it, is it RZA? RZA? Do you like yeah, his music? RZA. Does, yep. A lot of the producing I know. Because um, it's a lot, man. Why are you with yeah. that guy? Yeah, my my brother started listening to it, their music, and then I kind of got into their music. So we we booked tickets to um go see him in June because they're they're on tour. Yeah. So we might go like London and see them. Um. I just respect thought, them like a mofo, that's for sure. Yeah, they're still going on, it's good. Yeah. But, but there's quite a, a loophole with that kind of music, because you listen to MF Doom, and then there's MF Doom doing songs with other people, and then there's so many, like you said, there's so many songs that it just kind of goes on and on. Yeah. But like, that where'd MF you... That Doom album I heard is really good. What was your question? I was just going to say, um, where do you kind of get your inspiration from or where do you think it kind of like started like when, you know, before you got into rap or thinking about it? The real, well, I, I really started in rock music was the first stuff I liked. I liked stuff that made me go like, ooh, like I'm not supposed to hear that. So when I heard like, you know, Kurt Cobain talking about, guns and rape and all these x-rated topics as a young kid i'm like oh i like that let me let me see what's up with that or kiss you know they had all this sexual innuendo all their concerts girls got their tops off on the screens and stuff i said oh i like that um and then when i did get put on to rap Obviously, you know a lot of the subject matter there. I was like, oh, okay, I really like this. This isn't just some of the artists. All the rap artists are talking shit that I like. Um, and then what really drilled it home for me with rap um, 
even though my first album was Nelly's Country Grammar, I would say that I was really like solidified that I love rap music with Little John. I don't know if you remember his earliest albums, but he's not even saying anything on those things. He's just yelling cuss words and just crazy stuff. Um, and Little Wayne. In my opinion, Lil Wayne was the first artist to really make rap melodic in a way. And it went from, and bars. So there's bars, we have wordplay, double entendres, quick triple entendres, uh, metaphors, similes, all that madness with a melody that you can like basically sing to. Um, and he was the first rapper for me that like had the balls to step out of that 100% masculine energy and also bring this like flamboyantness that I really like. Um, so yeah, that's kind of what got me into rap, man. No, I love that. Battle, I love rap, that. battle rap, battle rap, battle rap. God dang. I love battle rap. Uh, but what were you going to say? No, I was just going to say, I love you know, how you explained it and how that kind of process came together from listening to like, you know, rock and kind of metal music and then, you know, it kind of opening your eyes to different avenues and then, you know, kind of going deeper into it and then discovering rap and kind of going deeper down into it and then, you know, finding your thing and putting that together. Right? And, you know, I think that's, you know, really, I mean, like a lot of, a lot of different rappers kind of, uh, I think I found that way, isn't it? Because I know like Juice World used to listen to a lot of rock. And then right. I think he kind of got into rap. Yep. And it's kind of playing with that avenue where there's like a similarity with it, isn't there, in some way? And some even rap music has kind of like rocky kind of music. I've seen some rappers or something do that. Yeah, Little Yachty just did the rock album. Um that's kind of has like a Pink Floyd vibe to it. Really good album, by the way. I think it's called Let's Start Here. Um, I was playing that for a while, the last Little Yachty project. Um, but yeah, man, music's interesting. Uh, it's a really special thing. I was also a big writer my whole life. So um, I gravitate to songs with like unique writing. Uh, anything that makes me go, damn, I wish I thought of that. Or damn, like, I'm jealous that I didn't write that first. Um, that's usually the stuff I'm attracted to. What about you, man? How'd you get into it? Into, into rap music? Yeah, that's your is that your yeah. primary genre? Yeah, yeah, mainly. Yeah. Um, I think I got into it. Oh, um, I'm trying to think. It was a long time ago. Um, I think when I was a kid, it was quite bad, really. I mean, my... <clears throat> My, I think my dad got me like an Eminem CD. Yeah. And, and I wasn't really allowed to listen to it. My mom kind of like, you know, kicking off because I listened to Eminem and she was like, what the hell is this? Um, but yeah, I think my dad got it me and I got into Eminem and then I went to my dad's friends with him when I was younger. My, my dad's friend would freestyle nice. and he had like one of those um, old kind of karaoke kind of mics. Yep. And he'd be putting on like beats and instrumentals and he'd be like, you know, freestyling and make, mixing his own music on his computer. And then, yeah, getting into like Eminem. And then I kind of got into uh, Exhibit. Oh. And then uh, Eminem Exhibit. You like his kind voice? Of, yeah. Yeah. And I, it didn't really sound like anything else that was I was listening to. And then kind of got it. I, I had a Will Smith CD. And then from Will Smith CD, I had a Kanye West late registration. Oh. And then it just kind of, you know, went yep. from there. Yep. But I think that's one of his best. I don't know. Like, I think that's probably one of one of his best albums, late registration, I think. Got a lot of good albums, man. I really like Kanye's creativity, man. Yeah. He, he is a... Um a musical genius as they say i do believe that mm. if you turn on a kanye west album and then turn on in any other album that isn't dr dre you'd be hard pressed to find a better sounding album 
sonically those Kanye albums are on another tier uh exhibit that's funny man I, I never really got into exhibit but i had a little phase with like bun b and slim thug and mike jones and paul wall and i saw exhibit on pimp my ride i never really played much of his music though that's somebody i should give a chance you still listen to exhibit shit I I literally I I tuned into one of his songs like the other week, but it wasn't as good as his as his old stuff. If that makes sense, because I don't, I think okay. he I think he features on I think he's just he's just kind of living the quiet life. I think he's probably you know does a lot of producing and stuff like that. But he's his older stuff is really good, uh, like Multiply and Paparazzi. I think I remember one of them records. One of them was a single, right? Yeah. Was it Multiply? Was that a single? I think it was might have been Multiply. And he did X, he did Paparazzi, he did Get, Get Your Walk On. Okay. I think, he, I think he, familiar. he did like a Crip Walk or something like that on it. Mm. Um, but yeah, there's different different um, artists are really good. And I think like as well, like what, what when you write, what, um, is there anything, do you have like a, a process about what you have to do to get in that place of writing? How do you kind of go to that place of writing or kind of thinking about doing a uh, a, ne- a next track or something like that or or ideas for the music video? How do you kind of like get to that place? So for me, I am always a creative at the end of the day. Like everything I do, a lot of people, like when I grew up, my old best friend, I need to make amends with him, by the way. You reminded me. I have an old best friend. We had a fallen out. And when I see him in person, I need we need to make amends. But anyway, back in the day, he would tell me that um basically that I'm a contrarian in in his own ways. Basically, that he he always would say that I do things to be different just to be different. And I don't feel that way. But what I do feel that is I do, I am always trying to find ways to be creative and to, I get, I guess, separate myself from the norm, but in a good way, I guess. It, it will kind of like what's missing. Um, I'm better at telling you how to fix something than how to start something i'm really good at like picking okay you gotta this needs to change uh this needs to go up this needs to go down you need to take this out i'm much better at that than i am with a blank slate but with all that being said where i get my creative uh how i get in that creative zone is either a it's got to come to me if i go out looking for it i'm never going to find it I overthink too much. Um, It's just going to be a disaster. So I wait for it to come to me. uh, Or I just throw myself in that situation. So sometimes I'll schedule myself for studio sessions when I have nothing creative in mind. But if I just throw myself in there, sometimes it'll just come to me. Um, so those are my two ways, kind of just throw myself in the fire and let what naturally comes out of me come out of me or, uh, actually take action when these creative ideas hit my head. But if I, I'm not one of those guys that's like, all right, I'm going to smoke, I'm going to drink, let me get my mind right. Or, all right, everybody clear the room. I got to go through my creative process my mind will fold under that pressure. It'll just be like, oh, you're trying to be creative right now, huh? Well, what are you gonna, what are you gonna think? You know, you got to make a good song, right? Like, well, that's not good enough. Or so it's got to be one of those two things, if that makes sense to you. Yeah, yeah, definitely. So it's it's like uh, channeling, isn't it? It's it's just going into the moment, kind of probably taking wherever you are in that day or in that moment yeah. into just just doing it just putting it out there yeah that's why there's a lot of songs that i've 
I have tons of songs that I don't release because a lot of them are how I'm feeling that day. And then in hindsight, you know, two weeks or two months later, I don't feel that way anymore. Or that could have just been like a, a one-time thing. And I don't relate to anything I said in the song that day. Um, so a lot of the music that I release now is stuff that I was able to capture in a bottle and that I still feel today. Um, I don't know if that correlates to what you do at all. Do you ever uh, kind of just say, you know what, I got to... How do you do it? I don't know. Yeah, no, no, I, I feel the same way. I feel I feel very similar. I think I will sometimes... You know, I'll, I'll, I'll have work and I'll be driving home or I might be thinking something. So if there's something on my mind or something I've experienced in my day, I will then kind of think, okay, I'm going to do a video and I'm going to talk about this. So I kind of will do a video sometimes where I'm talking about something and it might be something that I've experienced or, you know, in a day or the week or something that, I'm just reminded by or thinking about and I'll kind of put that into a video and just talk about it in like in, in like a reel or something I, I might talk about I don't know patience or um yes, I've seen those yeah so things like that and and that's kind of like a dump of what's going on in my head or what's kind of going on inside if that makes sense and I have nothing written in front of me or pre you know pre put down I just I'll just say what I think and, and and then it's and then it's kind of gone if that makes sense and I put it out then. Do you ever find yourself like I don't know if you're a scheduler guy? Do you ever find yourself kind of like crumbling under the pressure of times when you schedule things or let's just say I don't know how you like plan your business and such, but do you ever find yourself saying, okay, I, I really want to get, you know, five podcasts done this week. And then do you ever find yourself kind of like, I don't know, producing not the best material because you've kind of set yourself with the inside these walls to get something done? Yeah, no, I, I, I can definitely relate to that. And I think what I sometimes will do is you know, sometimes I'll have people reach out to me and they want a podcast and I'll say, here's my booking link. And then they'll book something. And sometimes I might get four or five a week. Um, or sometimes, you know, I might get one or two. It, it varies or one every couple of weeks. But yeah, there is an element of pressure with that. Um, but also I think in the, in the past, you know, I was just doing and doing and doing and doing and doing. And I, I still do make podcasts now as much as I can. I think my life's a lot busier now, but I, I will try and dedicate myself to do at least like one or two a week. Um, but I have to be, I have to like watch where my energy is because sometimes if I'm doing, I, I could do, I don't know, four or five in the week. But if I'm tired or burnt out from work and, whatever else then i'm not in a in as good head space to probably you know do as the podcast the best i can if that makes sense and have that so i sometimes will say look i need to reschedule i mean with hours i had to reschedule because I, I got the times mixed up because in america you do month day year whereas here we do day month year so that's where i got yeah. mixed up but that's why I, you know, we change around, but other times, uh, you know, I'm, I'm tired or I just need to recharge, recharge. Um, because I could, you know, do loads of episodes and I might not be able to give 110% if that makes sense to the episode or, or the person. It does. Kind of to piggyback off that, when I do schedule these blind studio sessions, there are times where well, you know, I have to show up because I'm paying for this time. I can't cancel on these guys. 
but there are times when I show up and like you said, based on the day, my mind isn't in the right place. And sometimes the sessions are a waste, as you would say, or as some people would say, where I don't pump out anything creative, creatively that session. And that happens sometimes in these interviews like this, where, you know, we have a, an interview booked on a particular day. And sometimes I feel flat in these interviews just based on the day. So I hear you. Um, that I actually have been slowing down on uh, performances for that reason. I haven't really been happy with my live performances. I mean, they're good, but I've wanted to level them up for a little bit now. Um, so I've actually been saying no to a lot of shows lately because my mind hasn't been right there. So I can I can relate to what you what you're saying there. Yeah, and I think that's like it's 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 like self kind of you know having um you know being able to self reflect and 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 check in with yourself, isn't it? And you see yeah. that you know you see people on TV you do that sometimes and they're doing these shows and not giving it, you know, 110%, but that's might be because they're burnt out, burnt out a bit and they're doing so many different things. But it's like, you know, I, I think if you're not doing little things for ourselves, sometimes we have to do little things for ourselves to recharge our batteries, whether that's, you know, go for a walk, watch TV or, you know, play a game or whatever. 100%. I think if, you, if you're if you not doing those little tiny things and you, you can't recharge and you can't do what you need to do the best, your ability if that makes sense or, or get or, or do what you've got to do and if you know if we're not there for ourselves we can't really be there for the people can we and the thing is it's 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 kind of that that balancing act with you know what we do yeah i totally agree with that and sorry now what were you gonna say i was gonna say like um when when it was like I really like your new song, The Two Cents. Do you want yeah. to talk about your new song? Sure. Like, what do you want to talk about it? Well, um, no, I'm saying I really like it. And I think I really like the clip I saw on your Instagram with the music video. What was uh, your kind of pre production ideas around that? You know, kind of what was your, uh, yeah, what was your ideas around your song and, and things? So, Two Cents was a verse that I've had for a little while now. I actually had it recorded to a different instrumental entirely. And I went down to New York to perform two records. It was Green Onions, the track that I released before Two Cents, and Two Cents. So I do the show down in New York. Uh, everybody afterwards came up to me and said hey i really like that first song i really like that first song i really like that first song which was green onions and nobody said anything about two cents so instead of taking the compliments and feeling good about what i had just done my brain goes instantly to well hold on a second what about my second song why ain't nobody talking about my second song all they talked about was my first one so I re-recorded Two Cents over a, a brand new instrumental with a brand new flow, a brand new melody in pocket, brand new ideas with the battery in my back from New York being like, all right, you know, these bastards didn't like this song. I'm going to make them like this song now. And yeah, that was kind of the, the motivation behind it. Um, the video was in uh, an abandoned school for boys. I think it was like one of the first school for boys in the whole United States. Um, and I hadn't done an abandoned location in a while. So, um, and it felt fitting for the, for the song as well. Um, but yeah, that's just a competitive record for me. Just me trying to, uh, just me wanting to beat their ass with it. I don't know. Just a competitive record. Yeah, because it's it's that like you said, you you did two songs and then they like one, and then it's kind of like you know how can I how can I 
change the second one to you know to be better and and yeah. kind of perfect that isn't it i think yeah yeah it, that i don't know if that's a good thing or a bad thing but that's a competitive the competitor in me for yeah. sure they might have liked the original they might have liked the other version i have no idea i just know that nobody came up to me and mentioned that song they only talked about the first one um so i took that to heart i guess i'm that kind but, I think of guy. but i think i think that's how we i think learn and grow isn't it sometimes you know not necessarily get things wrong but you know it's it's part of i think growth and and learning because yeah. i bet you probably learned and, and grew through redoing that song yeah yeah it also lit a little fire under my ass too but yeah i mean we only see the world through our own perspective so sometimes when people don't say something it says a lot and that's kind of what it was for me. I didn't get much feedback on the record, so that just told me that I need to come harder with it. Um, and that's what I did. And uh, we produced it like a mofo. I don't know if you probably didn't hear it, but for anybody that does listen, yourself included, um, we actually sample uh, 50 Cent's Piggy Bank record. Do you know that song? Clickety clank, clickety clank. That's actually sampled at the very end of Two Cents. Uh, not a lot of people picked it up. Did you? I thought, I, yeah, I did. I did pick it up. Yeah, really. I think, My video that, guy didn't even pick it up. Did really not? I I did think that at the end. Okay, I'm sure that that's the you know that song. Well, I'm glad to hear it. Yeah. Um. So yeah, man, I got another song coming out soon. I'm definitely on this um, release kind of wave right now. Um, I don't want to say too much about this other song, but it is featuring somebody. That's special nice. from Jay Gutta. So um, what about you? What are you working on? No, it's awesome, man. No, I'm really, really glad that, you know, you're doing music and, you know, I really look forward to, you know, the more songs you you put out and thanks you know i really i really like your music and i think you're you know you're very unique you know compared to you know the music i hear i appreciate that man that means mm. a lot to me no i wouldn't either. want to no. do it if i wasn't yeah you're yes. unique in your own right partner i do a lot of interviews uh well a lot to my standard at least yeah um and you stand out as well so uh i think you're doing what you're supposed to be doing in life and if you're not you're damn sure on the right path i'll tell you that you're getting close or you're warm or you're hot or you're in the process of doing it right now man so yeah um kudos to you as well yeah no you're welcome what's next no, for you like what's no, cheers, next cheers. No, it really means a lot to me uh, i really appreciate it and yeah no I, I think what i'm thinking of doing is this year uh is like streaming so I basically record on Zoom and for like the past couple of years, I haven't really backed up any of my uh, podcasts and stuff. So I I got a new phone and I re-downloaded all, I, I downloaded all my podcasts I've done on the audio side. And I've backed them all up to my Mac on the, the, the video clip side. So I'll upload them to up to YouTube. And then my goal this year is to, uh, you know, live stream. So I'd like to live stream my podcast. So have it on multiple platforms so that's something i'd like to do and how would you do it would you live stream it like on instagram or i would probably i would probably do it on i'd get it i'd sign up to Streamyard. okay if you heard of that so you can yes. you can stream to multiple platforms so i'll probably sign up to that and then get into that really because you kind of get you can kind of interact interact more with your audience and, and things like that and it probably puts puts uh, your coverage out there a lot more. So that's a goal of mine. Um, and another goal of mine this year, hopefully, you know, I'm into coffee. I quite like coffee. Mm. I would I would love to make my own coffee brand. So, oh, I'd love to do that on the side. 
Is it going to be dark, medium? What's up with that? Uh, I call it medium. I would if you do that, I will buy some coffee off you for sure. Yeah, no, definitely. Yeah, yeah. Can I so, put it? I can make like a cold brew with it. I can make it cold. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You can do what you like. Yeah. You know how to do all this already? Um, I've got kind of a bit of knowledge on how to do it. There's different ways of doing it. It's pretty complex. So you can do, you know, uh, B two B marketing. So you can then do it online. Uh, there's drop sh drop shipping, or you would brew your own roast. But I haven't got the space to. to do my own, you know, in my own location. Um, but yeah, it's it's quite costly, but that's that's a goal of mine. Something I want, I'd like to do. If um, you get it off the ground, please let me know. I drink coffee yeah, yeah. every day. Uh, I'm still kind of a rookie in the coffee game, but I would love to try what you think is good coffee. Yeah. No, yeah. it sounds good to me. Yeah. Hell yeah. I'll definitely do that. And with the live streaming, are you saying that like people would be able to see that? So if you're on StreamYard, mm. people can sign on to Instagram and see that you're live. Yeah, so I think you can you can connect to like I don't know how many you can connect to X amount of platforms. So I think you can probably connect it to YouTube. You could have it on Instagram and like LinkedIn or something like that, or Facebook even. So I, I, I'm pretty sure you could connect it to Instagram because I've seen people do it before. Mm. Um, but yeah, you, you you would be live and people would see it and they'd be able to interact with you. Because I have a friend who does it and he has like YouTube and you can kind of interact with the people and see what they're saying on the comments. So that'd be quite, quite cool. So I've, I've been on other people's podcasts when they've been live streaming and I occasionally do Instagram lives. So it just kind of pushes pushes what you're doing out there more and i think you know you can kind of comment in, in, in real time can't you you can interact with your audience so the next time we have an interview it's going to be live yeah so we'll, we'll live stream the next one if you like that might be a first for me i don't know if i've ever gone live before yeah all right so that'll be interesting i'm with that yeah do you guys celebrate april fool's day out there yeah, my birthday is on April Fool's, so I had my birthday on April Fool's this month. So that Happy was a belated birthday, man. Yeah, cheers, man. <laughs> That's my sister's birthday too. That's really is interesting. It? Oh, nice. Yeah, that was. So she's an Aries. An Aries. Yeah, like April was like Aries and stuff. Well, star signs. Okay, and what'd you do for your birthday? I I chilled with my family. Uh, my, I've got my younger brother into The Sopranos, so we watched a few episodes of The Sopranos. Nice. Uh, we did that, kind of saw my family, had some cake, and then I went for a meal with my girlfriend, had a few drinks, and then, um, yeah, went back home and just, yeah, it was, it was kind of nice and chill, really. Did you get any gifts? Yeah, yeah, I got, um, my brother got me that MF Doom vinyl. Well, yeah. Uh, my girlfriend got me a book. She got me some chocolate. Mm. Uh, what else did she get me? And then I got like some bit of a little bit of money and stuff. So, oh. but then I I bought myself that vinyl player, but it doesn't work. It's faulty, so I got to take it back. So, is it used? <laughs> it's brand new. It's brand oh, new. Man. It's the <laughs> it's the line thing in the back. We tested it out with two different cables, and um, I mean it was it was reduced from like. 200 pounds to 100 but it was brand new from like the shop so oh i mean you can spend a lot more than that on on so i'm gonna see what they say and go from there so i'll do that this week fine they'll replace it yeah I don't worry about it i'll just get a cd player instead no just... <laughs> nah, i don't do that the vinyl is gonna sound really good yeah. you just gotta treat the vinyls good they do scratch easy yeah but so, um yeah so that'll be good and like when's your birthday june june if we're talking signs i'm a big gemini yeah my girlfriend's a gemini she's in yeah. june does she uh when, when's her birthday in june 12th of june so i'm the 13th so me and Gosh, her probably have true. a lot in common yeah is she uh can she be hot and cold? Can she be like somebody one day, another day, somebody else the next day? 
I need to be careful what I say, but uh, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> but yeah, it's relatable. Yeah. yeah, yeah, I get that a lot. And if it's not day by day, it's a thousand different moods in one day. Yeah, um, it's yeah. interesting, though, isn't it? Because yeah, because I think like Gemini's like that, and then like Aries are quite kind of hot, and I'm very kind of go go go. Yeah, my sister who's an Aries is that way too. She's go, go, go. She's in nursing mm. school right now. She's a real go-getter. Mm. Uh, she's always at concerts. She's she's at like four fucking concerts a week. Yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah, you guys like to stay busy. Yeah, I was like that today at work. I, I was doing what I was doing. There was something else going on. And then someone came because we had to, we're like 15 or 15 to 20 boxes of paperwork that had to be stored away. So I was like running around doing that. And then I was back to it at the laptop. And then it was, yeah, it's, it, are you kind of spiritual in that sense? You do, are you kind of aligned with like star signs? Do you follow that kind of stuff? I'm working on it piece by piece. I am spiritual and I can't, you know, I can't deny the, the irony in things about what you read about our signs and then kind of what seems to be true about them in real life. Um, I know that there's more than just uh, your sign, right? There's like your sign and then it even goes as deep as like when you're, what time you're born and shit like that, right? Yeah. Yeah, it's a whole massive like rabbit hole. Yeah, yeah I'm working mine. on it. I'm getting there. I'm catching up. Yeah, like in terms of like spirituality, like um, what what do you think to you know like the importance of like energy and spending your time around you know good energy and and how you know people's energy can affect us. Do you kind of like vibe with that? Because I know like in music, and if you wanting to be somebody or you're doing something it can be very easy for people to kind of say you know why are you doing that for or be quite critical like do you kind of think that's important like energy and the people we're around and, and what we listen to yeah yeah it definitely is i think that's uh a big reason why i always record alone uh because what my energy is going to be is already a dice roll who knows what my energy is going to be that day so now I gotta I gotta guess what his, hers, and whatever their energies is gonna be that day. I don't even take the risk. Um, so yeah, energy plays a big factor in our thoughts, and then you know from our thoughts what comes out creatively. Um, I'm really spiritual, man. I pray like four times a day. Um. I fear God, whatever God is. Um, I fear God like crazy. I, I do feel that uh, our lives and our well-being is in God's hands. So you ought to be nice to God and you ought to be grateful. Um, but I'm on the journey with a lot of people. Like I'm still trying to figure out why we're here. I'm still trying to figure out why we think the ways we do. Why am I obsessed with music the way I am? Why do you like to do conversations and podcasting like you do? Um, it's just a big mystery, man. It's definitely interesting. Yeah, no, I, no, I love that. And yeah, it's it's really, it definitely is interesting, isn't it? And I think, you know, it's, it, it's uh, you know, energy, you know, the way we think, our thoughts, uh, there's definitely some, there's definitely, you know, definitely something out there. And I think there's more to what we can kind of comprehend and understand. Um, I've definitely had weird experiences where things have happened, you know, in terms of, you know, like spiritual stuff happening. If I've not been okay in myself, that's usually if things happen. I don't know if you've experienced that or have you felt anything in terms of like paranormal stuff that you ever kind of... I've never had anything paranormal, picked. but I have well, a weird thing with uh, the number 1111. Yeah. For whatever reason, I see that every day. 
um, some people will say that you see it because you're consciously aware of it or whatnot. And they say like, you're more likely to see it when you're thinking about it like that. But I have, I've had this 11, 11 thing pop up in just the weirdest times and the weirdest it's weird. It's creepy how this 11, 11 thing, um, I haven't had any paranormal stuff happen, but, um, this 11, 11 thing is weird. <laughs> I'll tell you that it's an everyday <laughs> thing for me. It's weird. It's like, it's like a synchronicity thing, isn't it? I suppose it's like, it's something, man. And like, also I like, what uh, just i don't think i've ever asked you this before um do you ever hit any favorite films i'm a quentin tarantino guy oh so, nice uh, yeah i i think he is the pinnacle of film for me so all his films pulp fiction um reservoir dogs i even i even like the hateful eight i know, I know a lot of people say the hateful eight's really slow but i I think that's a masterpiece um yeah man uh i love scarface mm -hmm. i love how slow it is i love how intense it is um i love how it's shot um what about you yeah no no i i love tarantino as well um i also like uh martin scorsese films okay so like Casino, Goodfellas. Yeah, the great movies. Um, some Stanley Kubrick's films, you know, The, the, the Shining. Oh, The Shining, yep. Yeah, he did I the know that. He, Stanley Kubrick did Full Metal Jacket. Um, great movie, Full Metal Jacket. And he did uh, like a really old, weird one called Space Odyssey. Haven't seen it. Um, and I recently got into like, can you remember, did you ever watch Cartoon Network? Yeah, of course, yep. So I recently got a, you know, Samurai Jack. Man, my buddy said uh, the Samurai Jack is great. Yeah. I've never seen it. I never gave it a, ch I never gave it a chance. Yeah. I'll send you a link so you can watch it. Um, yeah, it's class. Okay. But I, I kind of got into like anime. I'm slowly getting into anime. That kind of stuff. So like Samurai Jack, um, Afro Samurai. You heard Afro RZA's got the soundtrack on it. Oh, okay. Um, and my brother's, you ever seen Boondocks? I never got into it, but I know it's real popular. Yeah. So my, my taste is quite varied. So I kind of go down Quentin Tarantino, gangster movies, um, to like, you know, cartoons and stuff like that. Yeah, we have that in common. All those movies are some of my favorites, man. Uh, Full Metal Jacket, uh, Saving Private Ryan. Mm -hmm. Um... And then anime wise, um, I mean, I was always into Dragon Ball and Dragon Ball Z. Yeah, I love that. Um, yeah. Um, oh yeah, I'm rewatching Dragon Ball right now. Um, I like the Attack on Titan, uh, Full Metal Alchemist, um, and I like a lot of the indie animes too. Um, yeah. Like some of the ones I see on Netflix that only have like one one season or a few episodes. I like a lot of those. Um, a lot of the animes with like a hundred seasons. It's kind of like the Wu Tang thing for me, man. Like I don't know yeah. where to begin. It's too deep. I'm too far behind. Yeah. Um, but yeah, man, we have similar tastes there for sure. I know. Yeah. I could be wrong, but I think Tarantino's next movie is supposed to be his last. That's what he said. Yeah, because he was on Joe Rogan, wasn't he? He said he's almost like scared to make crap films, I think. He said like this, I think he, he thinks 10's a good number in what yeah. he said. Yeah. Dude, what do you think to Once Upon a Time in Hollywood? Because that's kind of like when you talk about, you know, you do music and that's an art form in itself. Yep. His films are kind of like an art form as well. Very much. Did yeah. you think, what did you think to his last one? I thought that it was necessary in his catalog um it wasn't a great movie for me and probably not a great movie for our demographic but for people his age that maybe love films to the extent he does 
and grew up around that time, I'm sure it's a great a great movie. But for me, you know, the best things about that was obviously the ending mm. and the acting, of course, and the directing. But, uh, you know, it, it's not one of uh, my favorite Tarantino yeah. films, no. Can you remember the scene on, uh, is it Inglorious Bastards, where Brad Pitt, and he's like, call me. <laughs> yeah, that's a great movie, too. Uh, yeah. yeah. I forgot that he did Inglorious Bastards. I know uh, Once Upon a Time in Hollywood was his ninth film. Uh, I like the bad guy in Inglorious Bastards. Oh, Christoph Waltz. Is that who it is? The one that comes yeah. up in the house and they're all hiding in the... Yeah, I like that dude. Yeah, yeah he's, a, he's a really good actor. Yeah. Um, yeah, yeah, movies are good. And I think, like, it, it it's appreciating someone's art, isn't it? Like, you know, I listen to your music and I appreciate your music. You know, not just the music, but it's like the art form to it and what's pieced together. And, you, you know, I really see that. And I think you can kind of see that in your music. You see that in your videos. Um... But when I think when you're a creative person, you have that appreciation for art. You you see these kind of intricate details. Do you kind of think that as well? Yeah, I'm I'm very much that way in movies and music. Um, I'm always trying to see like what's special about this form of art, and Tarantino does a lot of that, and he takes risks, but I think they're healthy risks. I know they're always giving him a hard time about his slow shots. And his, you know, 45 minute, you know, one, one take dialogue or whatever the hell it is. And I think that's great because nobody else is doing it. And it's refreshing in a way. Uh, mm. I'm that same way with music, too. I'm always. It's pretty easy to see when something is inspired by something else versus something that just like really came from this the depths of this person and of course everybody's inspired by something but you can tell originality and authenticity from you know a branch off another tree yeah and um, i think that's i think that's really important in you know what you do in music and i think you know especially being a podcast as well i just can t- tend to do what comes to me i'm not yeah really looking over people i might see questions people ask and think ask a question you know or good theme to do but then people can really tell you know the difference can't they oh yeah people can tell uh some people will still sign on to it if it's trendy people like you know their their, their trends for a reason we tend to like what we like but at the same time i, I do believe people can pick up on authenticity wise people you know uh, not the sheep and such. Speaking of movies, have you seen uh, that movie, uh, the one that got a bunch of awards, uh, Everything, Everywhere, All at Once? No, my girlfriend's mom was watching it. Worth have you watch. seen? Is it worth yeah. what? Is it subtitled? Yeah. Is it? Uh, no, 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 no. They're they're Asian and they do some subtitles, but yeah, yeah, a yeah. lot of it's in English. Okay, yeah, I'll give that a watch. I'm not, I, I, it's on my list, but I'll I would have recommend to look. it. Yeah, oh, right, I'll, I'll give it a watch this week. This week for me, watching the Mario movie. Oh yeah, I saw that's out now. <laughs> I might, I might. <laughs> yeah, that's what I'm watching. Yeah, yeah. I might book my girlfriend like tomorrow. Have you, have you, are you, are you into the games as well? I'm big into Nintendo. Yeah, so this Mario's got me a little geeked. I'm looking for the I'm looking forward to the Air Jordan movie. Um and then there's a Joe Queen Phoenix movie coming out. Did you see the trailer for that? Something about Bo. Uh don't be afraid no, of Bo. I've not oh. seen that. I know he's doing Joker too, but I didn't realize he's doing They are doing something. Joker too? Yeah, but it's not gonna be a musical. It, but it's a movie? Yeah, it's a movie, but it, they put it into like a musical. Oh. No, a bit like um, like the Sweeney Todd film with Johnny Depp. It's like got singing and stuff within the film. I like that. Yeah. But yeah, I have to check... Don't Worry Darling. Yes. What'd you think about that one? That was... I liked I it. I liked it. 
it's um it was a bit weird though it 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 kind of it, i felt engrossed in the movie and that's what yep. a movie's supposed to do but i didn't expect it to go the way that it went if that makes sense kind i didn't felt see that anticlimactic in a way no yeah that's that's what i was trying to say trying to trying yeah. to come to i kind of wish it was something different than that, that oh really wow, on my mind yeah yeah it, it confused the crap out of me but i it made sense but i like you said it was just building up and then i was like oh okay yeah it was good though up until that I, it was good i liked it too did you see the new john wick you and john wick i'm not a john wick guy my little brother yeah. is is it good i know that series kicks ass people love it it's like nearly three hours long <laughs> is that too too long for you it's too it was good but it was long yeah i i think it could have shortened it down a little bit is it the last john wick i'd say it is yeah so probably not no no it, it is the last john wick <laughs> but i'm not gonna say what happens okay 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 yeah don't yeah don't don't tell me um but yeah it, it's I think it's good to listen, you know, listen to music, uh, get into films, and you know, you can connect with other people, can't you, as well, you know, in in, in doing that and have you know good conversations. And um, I was just trying to think, like, is there if you wasn't doing music, like, what what else do you think you'd be doing? I think you asked me this before, and yeah. what I would be doing. Is, yeah, I did ask you. Yeah, I would just be off the grid. I'd be doing nothing. I'd just mm. be a good person. Mm. Uh, I would just uh, be off the grid entirely, and just enjoying life for what it is. Mm. Uh, the real seeds of life, nature, um, marriage, kids. Yeah. Uh things like that. I would just be enjoying mm. life. Um, I'm sure that can still happen. I'm sure I can I'm sure you can you can definitely still do that. But I know I know with music and I know with you know, you there's a lot of sacrifice in in in, in the pursuit of, of you know in working towards things and, and I feel that, you know, in podcasting as well. It's you have to kind of be on your grind, don't you? And Things like that. Yeah, there's something to it. Um, there's something to trying to pursue it as a profession versus a hobby and something you love. Um, yeah, I love it, and I'm obsessed with it. So that's why it is a profession of mine. But yeah man i don't like i don't like the whole new digital world man i don't mm. like it at all i don't i'm really anti social media anti mm. internet yeah anti all that so yeah i'd be off the grid man what about you that's pretty cool and uh I'm trying to think about if i wasn't doing what i'm doing uh you professional muay thai fighter you're think. looking fit man you look fucking uh, fit Have no you been cheers man weight and getting in shape what's up yeah oh i think i think it's probably going more so <laughs> yeah you look fit man oh That's cheers fit. man yeah i yeah I, I kind of you know i do eat chocolate and stuff at the weekend and all that but yeah i be i go i go more so you know once or twice a week and then i'll you know work out in between and stuff and yeah, no, cheers, man. And yeah, I just been just been busy flying around, and so what you know, would you do if you weren't? What I do? That was a question. Yeah, I wasn't doing podcasting or doing the job I'm doing. Yeah, maybe. I mean, I used to previously work in hospitality, and I enjoyed and really enjoyed that. So if I if I wasn't doing that, I'd probably, you know, maybe have my own cafe or something, or you know, be a you know like a being a you know into the whole kind of hotel kind of you like that people? kind of yeah so i, I think if people, i wasn't man. you say you like people 
No, yeah, I said you like people. I hate people. Oh yeah. <laughs> yeah, man, you can't get away from people. Even if you weren't gonna do podcasting, yeah. you would still yeah. be with people in a coffee shop or a hotel. Yeah. Very interesting. But I think man. it's being of service. That's. It feels like we're we're here. Part of it feels like we're here to do that, right? Doesn't it yeah. feel like we're here to help each other in some way? Mm. I agree. Part of me feels that way too. We're not here for our solo journey. We're here to contribute to the bigger, the bigger thing, whatever that is. Yeah. No, I totally, totally agree on that. And it's that added value you put out there, whatever that is that you do, isn't it? You know, whether yeah. that's you know, music, whether that's cinema, whether that's what I do, or whether that's, you know, even even people, I think, you know, you see these, even bakeries, you know, people making cakes or, you, you know, you, you're making someone's day, you know. It's, you, like I I went to got my, my shoes, you know, uh, resold with like the bottom of them, like repaired yeah. and we put, yeah. and I like felt really happy, you know, having that interaction going in there and I could see, you know, he felt happy, you know, helping me repair, you know, helping sort that out for me. And that made him happy and I felt happy. And it was that kind of exchange. And I was like, mm. you know, even the small things like that, just having your shoes done, that guy enjoyed the process of doing that and helping me with that. And a lot of people, I think, don't always look at these small things. And sometimes it's a little things, isn't it? You know, that guy's happy what he's doing. He's adding value. It's not just these big, big things. It's, you know, it's all these kind of things in life. Everyone's got a purpose somewhere, haven't they? As you said, it's not just all about, you know, our solo journey. It's, you know, adding that, I think, value to the people and in whatever way that is. Yeah, I agree with that. That's why when you asked me what I would do if I wasn't doing music, I think the first thing that comes to me is just like being a good person, man. I think that's mm -hmm. what is missing a lot of places right now is people mm. just being a good person with no alternative or ulterior, whatever the hell it word, the word it is. Uh, hidden bonus. agenda. Yeah, no hidden agenda, not for your own personal gain, for you to get to the next step or for you to make it to the next chapter. Uh, if I wasn't doing music, I would just try to be of service for others in as, as simple ways like you just said just making mm. somebody's day talking to friends or family that don't got nobody to talk to mm. things like that is what i would do um yeah no i love that with the music that's one of the things that keeps me going because i do ask mm. myself like is this an ego thing am i doing this because strictly because i think the i'm the best it has to be something more to it and the more i think about it um like you said i do feel like i'm of service to music as a whole by mm. being true to myself and the small amount of people that actually relate to me i know are grateful that i'm doing what i'm doing being the person I am while I'm doing it and that those people have something they can relate to. Uh, Cause for me personally, sometimes when I listen to music nowadays, I have a hard time relating to stuff or feeling like I identify with that artist. Even if I like a lot of artists stuff, I don't always identify or agree with what they're saying or doing or how they're doing it. Um, yeah. Yeah, no, no, I, I, I completely agree. I completely agree, and I, you know, I, I love what you said, and I think, you know, especially in terms of you know being yourself, being authentic to you, is definitely key in life. A lot of people do not do that, and they're trying to like be someone else, or they don't know themselves, or whatever. And being authentic to you is, you know, definitely what people should be doing. Now, um, rewind here rewind a second yeah. you mentioned paranormal activity earlier in this conversation and you mentioned paranormal activity the last time we talked can you yeah. remind me what instance you had because i remember you told me 
but what is this thing that happened or you've had more than one thing happen to you right yeah <laughs> all right what happened because i can't remember and you're gonna if once you start telling okay. me i think i'm gonna remember uh well i'll kind of run through some so there was a time where i broke up with a girlfriend in the past yeah and then i was not in a good place and then i i heard like a like a knocking sound yeah. on my windowsill mm. and then i heard like you know footsteps in the hallway and then on one occasion i stayed in my auntie's uh, old house like a cottage in the middle of nowhere in the countryside and she had a little i'll kind of speak the story on but she had um, little dogs and i went to bed and the dogs kept looking at things that weren't there and they kept looking at me and they kept running off the, into the landing and then i get hearing banging noises downstairs and then i went downstairs had a look around all the banging stopped there was nothing around and then i went to bed and there was a teddy bear on the bed and the head kind of dropped forward mm. so then I, I thought i kicked it initially so i pushed kicked it back and i put it back and then the teddy bear's head slowly like drooped down again yeah. so i was like screw this and i like grabbed it and i threw it across the room and then just put the quilt over my head and then went tried to go to sleep yeah um so that actually that actually did happen and then um there's been weird occasions i'm sure my girlfriend won't mind me saying this but she lives in like in a, in a converted garage and there's been some strange instances where there's been like a the, the closet has been like making banging noises mm. and i've woken up and then uh there was a time as well at her place on the top of the closet she has teddy bears mm. and one of her teddy bears was thrown off the top into her laundry basket and i saw it just fl fly off like just and I told her, and I was like, did you just see that? And she's like, no, what do you mean? I was like, your teddy bear just went flying off there. And I went to pick it up to see, you know, in case it was the wind, if it had any weight to it. Mm. And it was a weighted kind of teddy bear full of beads. Wow. And, I, and, I, and I saw that happen twice. Twice? So, yeah, it happened From twice. there, down there, twice? Yeah, on two different occasions. Man, what's up with you and teddy bears? Well, I don't... I, I don't <laughs> Damn. I think it's just a strange coincidence, but but I'm I'm quite tuned in. I think it might not be anything bad. You know, I think if I'm not okay in myself, I think that's probably when I tend to experience weird stuff like that. I feel, I like to think someone's out there kind of watching over me, if that makes sense. But but yeah, that's mm. that's some stuff I've experienced. I mean, I think it's one of those things where you have to experience it yourself to then kind of be like okay mm. but that's that's me not lying that's me being genuine that's me being 100 percent genuine yeah no i've never uh that's never happened to me man you gotta be you gotta look that up on google see what's up with you and the teddy bears man because that's interesting <laughs> i don't think that's a coincidence <laughs> but that's just me man yeah i'll have to um see what it's all about but yeah i mean Mm. But I've I've done videos though. I've done Instagram videos like reels and I've been talking, right? And I can send you one. And I've been talking. There's been like orbs, you know, orbs. Yeah, I hear like orbs. White. Yep. And I've done video, I've done quite a few videos and they've kind of like, you know, moved around. Mm. I did one in my car actually, and it kind of comes down and it goes around and then I can't explain that. I don't know what it is. It might be light. I don't know. But now they say there's a lot of studies about that when we're in these um ruts or we're in this these like flow states hmm. a lot of a lot of people say that we get signs like that for me it hmm. happens with the 11 11 thing hmm. i'll know that when i'm in a like big flow state or very busy or very consumed with something it's almost always when I see eleven eleven pop up. Yeah. 
Um, that's why when people say that I'm looking for it, I know I'm not looking for it. Because when it usually yeah. pops up is when I'm most busy and most preoccupied in my yeah. mind. It's almost like a reminder to me every time I see it that I need to like, I need to take a minute yeah. and, just, and regather. But that's interesting, you, man. Yeah, it is, it is interesting. There's definitely, you know, there's a lot of energy out there. I think, you know, a lot of it's energy. You know, I think there's, there's more, there's like I said, there's things going on there, out there we don't really understand. Yeah. And I think like maybe write down the places you see those numbers maybe or take a picture or kind of take, like write a note of where it's happening maybe. Yeah, it happens everywhere. So the more thing I should, I'm trying to be more aware of now of, of when it happens. So what I'm, me telling you that like I'm always really busy or in a big flow state, that's a realization I just realized like last week. Hmm. So I'm consciously trying to figure that out. Hmm. How recent is all this stuff at your girlfriend's and all that? Oh, it was it was it was quite a while ago. It was you about had anything recent? No, it was about a year ago. Okay. So I have no explanation. Okay. Yeah, I have no explanation for that. I don't know, but she saw it the second time. Um. I don't know. I mean, you don't think it's like, I don't know. Have you looked it up on Google? Yeah. I mean, and they don't say anything. There's no research on, on what you've seen. Well, they kind of say like poltergeist stuff, don't they? And things like that. And all the horrible <laughs> stuff, which freaks me out. And I just kind of right. go, okay, that's no internet for today. I've seen the movies. <laughs> yeah. Um, but I don't, I don't think it's that, you know, I think if there is anything out there, it's nothing bad. You know, if that's, if that's the case, that's what I like to think. Um, you know, my, my ancestors are like Native American and stuff, like on my granddad's side. Mm. So I think, you know, they're quite spiritual people and, 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 you know, you think what comes with that. Um, so, yeah, I mean, who knows, but it's interesting to look into it, to talk about it. And I think, like you said, you know, being spiritual, you know, it's it's important to kind of. I think it's but it's important to see more than what than what's just going on. Um, different. Yeah, it's important. It's important to just let things be as well. Mm. Mus musically, for me, uh, sometimes I just, you know, just let things go, let it fly mm. out of you, however it is, and then a lot of times. Some people ask me like, hey, Jay, like what is uh, or my engineer or whatever, like what's this song about? Like, what are you working on? I'll be like, I have no clue, man. It's just like <laughs> what's coming out of me. This is what I'm feeling. Uh, and then in hindsight, I'll learn what the song was about. Like, I'll learn like, oh, OK, uh, this is what I this is really what I was thinking or this is really what this song is about. Um. Yeah, it's interesting, man. Do you think, I think it's important to do that. Do you think it's important to do that because a lot of people overthink it too much and they, they're they not able to really go into that place where you are. You can just kind of go with it and do it, channel that into it. Some people are trying yeah. to perfect it too much and whatever else. Yeah, I'm a big, and I'm really anti like structure and formula. I know a lot of people go to school for song structure and they go to mm. school and get taught what a hit song sounds like and this is you got to have a climax here you got to have a, a drop here you got to have a build here uh it should only be this long um these vowels like ring off in listeners ears like we like ah ooh, a e like those rhymes we like those um and I'm I'm anti all that. I just I think that the real magic is what's gonna come out of us naturally, man. Mm. Um so yeah, man, I think that's a that hinders a lot of people because there are some great artists out there that make some really great commercial sounding stuff. Mm. But I think the real gems are like these unorthodox experimental alternative stuff 
It's funny you say that because do you, have you ever heard of Danny Brown? Yes. My brother got me into Danny Brown. Yeah. And his, have you heard his new album with QPEG? Is it QPEG? Some JPEG Mafia? Mafia? Nope. I know he's doing a podcast now. I haven't yeah. heard any of his new music. I've sent his uh, new albums on YouTube. If you listen to it, that's experimental hip hop. My brother said it is. Okay. And it's a bit crazy. Some of his songs, because there's like four or five different um, sounds. So you're hearing him rapping. The other guy is saying something. There's an instrumental and then there's bass and then there's another instrumental and then there's another sound. And You're saying it's like two songs in one? It's it's, it's a song, but yeah. there's lots of different noises, if that makes sense. It's not just one instrumental and him rapping. I'll see what it's about, man. I'm if that makes sense. I'm gonna, yeah, I'm going to write it down right now. Uh, What's it called? I think it's called... Um, Danny Brown. I think album. it's called... I think, I'm sure it's called Scaring the Hose. <laughs> Scaring the hose. I think that's what it's called. <laughs> yeah, he's a crazy bastard, man. I like Danny Brown. What, what JPEG he... Mafia, right? Yeah. What, what does he always uh... say? He's always like, you know what I'm saying? Yeah, right. Or whatever yeah, the fuck right. he says. Yeah, something like that. Yeah, I like Danny Brown, man. Uh, yeah. yeah just with JPEG Media. I don't know who that is, but I'm about to find out. Yeah. Yeah, he's funny. Yeah, man. But um, but yeah, no, I'm I'm really happy, you know, we we're able to do this again, and you know, I, I like, I like a podcast where we just kind of see where it goes, and yeah, man, I think we have deep, deep, good conversations, and you know, any where, you know, I wish you all the best in music and everything you're doing, your new songs, and uh, where where can people find your content? Where can they find you online? You know, social media, that kind of thing. Yeah, everything is. Uh, who is Jay Gutta? That's J A Y G U D D A. Uh, who is Jay Gutta on everything? That's my website. That's my Instagram. That's my Facebook. That's my Fortnite. That's my Pokemon Go. That's my WhatsApp. That's my Kick. Whatever the all the social media platforms. I'm not on LinkedIn. I'm super quiet on Twitter. I'm not on any Twitch or any streaming platforms. Um, I am on SoundCloud. I am on Spotify. I am on iTunes. Um, yeah, man, check it out. I think my next release, when I actually do a project, I think I'm gonna do. I think I'm gonna do CDs, man. Nice. Yeah. Um. So yeah, thanks for the opportunity, man. Thanks for the platform. No, no, you're uh, it's welcome. It's a pleasure man. talking to you as well. Um, I love when we have nothing to talk about. That means we have lots to talk about. Yeah, yeah. Um, so again, a pleasure. The next time we talk, it's gonna be live. Mm. Uh, I'm already nervous, <laughs> but, but I'm ready to do it. Yeah. Um, so yeah. Catch us live next time we talk. Is it going to be this year? Are you going to put this into effect in 2023? Yeah, yeah, I'll do it this year. So maybe later this year or something. Okay. Summer or fall. Yeah, yeah. We'll sort um, something out. Deal. Yeah, all right, awesome. man. It was an absolute pleasure. No, you too, man. You take it easy and uh, all the best with everything you're doing, uh, Jay. And uh, really grateful to be your friend and grateful to be able to do this. The very same to you, partner. Cheers, man. Peace.